तो वो करेक्ट करता है When World War II ended, the bulk of the Royal Indian Navy, RIN, was birthed at Bombay. Um, okay. I thank both of you for coming. I just want to um, say that last year, early last year, uh, a book landed on my table. Uh, you know, an advanced copy of a book. And reading that book, uh, it it jogged my memory of information that I had at one time had and you know like many people of my age possibly who would have known about it had long forgotten but uh, 1946 <coughs> the last war of independence the book jogged that memory and inspired like Sandeep said inspired us to go and make the film I took the idea to Sandeep and uh, he readily agreed and he said that yes, we have to do it. And thank you all today uh, for coming here and watching the film. You are the first audience ever of The Last Push. So, and uh, we'll talk to Mr. Kapoor and Professor Mishra about some things which we could not uh, talk about in the film because, because of the limited resources and time constraints. We only uh, showed what happened in Bombay, but there were la larger implications. There were other places where the mutiny had taken place. And there was a lot of things which happened afterwards. So I think I'll start with uh, Mr. Kapoor uh, telling us after we, in the film we saw that they surrendered, but we didn't go into what happened after that. You see, uh, whenever I see the, this film, I mean, or, or read about it, and we also made a small promotional film, I, I go through really variety of emotions, you know. There is anger, there is frustration, there is sadness, and there is so much sense of betrayal that, that I, I get, look, you know, looking at, and you made a wonderful film. You really projected it so beautifully that I don't think I, I, that I could do it in print as you did in, in video. Very, very good. So congratulations. Now, um, there's so many things. As I said, I mean, I, this is seven, eight years of my work, so I'm, you know, very difficult to condense it. But I will do my best as I said, take out things that were that were edited out. First of all, the whole, whole mutiny was edited out. You know, hardly, I mean, there are so many people here, friends sitting here, I would like them to raise their hand and say, yes, they knew about the mutiny. There are four or five people. Out of it. So they are just about, and even in the Navy, the, the, the higher officers didn't know about, about the mutiny. It was simply edited out. And this is because, although I, I, I must very openly say that I support the centrist party, the Congress party, but the, the fact is that at that time, they did, they did not want anything to succeed which did not have their support or blessing, especially when it came to freedom movement. So first of all, it was, you know, it was, it was big. I, mean, I remember in, in, in writing the, the book on Gandhiji uh, in volume uh, 89, 90, I think um, in 1946, this is, all, this is how the book was triggered. I read a letter that Sadar Patel had written to uh, Mahatma Gandhi saying that I have asked Jawahar not to come to Bombay and address these uh, naval uh, boys. This, this will only inflame everything, but he's not listening to me. He's coming because uh, Aruna, Aruna meaning Aruna Asaf Ali's telegram, and he's coming here. Well, let him come, you know, but he's only going to create problem. Now that letter, in in the in the in the volume 89 end of 89 or early, or beginning of 90 that triggered my so there was so much going on at the uh, at the back and yet as i said because the congress did not want to support a mutiny like this because it was not 
uh, started by them, they, they are all through asked these boys to surrender with a promise that none of them will be victimized. But this did not happen. Sorry for me to interrupt. If you could just first say like how the British took action against them. Because like I said, the film leaves it at, you know, the thing, how overnight they were arrested and taken to those. You see, they surrendered because of ex explicit promise by Sardar Patel and, and Congress party and, uh, and Muhammad Ali Jinnah that no action will be taken, that, they, that no, will be, no one will be victimized and uh, that they will be all very fairly treated. But that didn't happen. In, within 24 hours of, the, of their surrender, the so-called ringleaders, they called them the ringleaders, about 500 of them were arrested and put to in Mulund uh, camp, which was like a concentration camp. Please. And they were Kalyan. So this, this, was, uh, this was a very delay. Whereas the, 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 the Britishers knew exactly what the plan of Congress was. Congress did not know what exactly the plan of Britishers was. That is the, because they were so eager to get to, uh, uh, to, to negotiating table and, nego and negotiate a settlement. They did not want a rebellion at this time. It was, it was too risky. The, 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 uh, the, they did not want to rock the boat, so to say. You know, and that's what happened. Uh, Professor Mishra, fine. That, that was the Congress point of view, and that's how sort of history treated them. But as a professor of history, teaching students, why, was, why didn't it come up as part of a history course? It is quite true that it did not. Uh, but before I explain why it did not, I think we must all... Firstly, congratulations. It's just, I think I look upon, there is a continuum between the book and the film. So what Pramodji did and what Sujoy did, these are not two things. These are two components of the same thing, which is to remind us about this extremely important episode of Indian nationalism. You see, Indian nationalism is not just a politics, not just some individuals, not just some organization. It was much, much larger. Great passion, great sentiment, great emotion, which lay behind the kind of... Now, the moment was such that I think these people served the country largely with their, with their failures. They, in a way, failed, but their failure contributed to a success. Because there was an RIN, it forced the hands of negotiating nationalists. They were able to negotiate a better deal because of the background of the RIN, because the British were completely on the defensive. If the services are not, are not with them, British will not be able to negotiate from a position of advantage. So it was in the defeat was a great contribution to the cause of nationalism. It helped those who were formally negotiating on behalf of Indian nationalism. Now, why did it, why is it that our history books, our textbooks have not spoken uh, so much about it? It's difficult to answer the question, but uh, let me just hazard a guess. First, of course, was when India became independent, Indian nationalism, national movement became the dominant official ideology of the state. And then I think in the name of the Indian national movement, certain segments of Indian nationalism, national movement, genuine definitely, but they got a kind of a priority over the much extremely important but multiple efforts which lay outside the organizational uh, framework of the Congress. But history, as you know, is an ongoing process. History writing does not come to an end. Certain things get delayed, but they happen. So the story of Indian nationalism is an ongoing story. And I think this should have happened earlier. But anyway, it's a very, very important. This is a, that was a very important moment, 1946, in the life of Indian nationalism. And this is a very important moment when we discover an extremely important episode of Indian nationalism, an extremely important chapter of Indian nationalism, for which I do not congratulate them, but I'm extremely, as a historian, I'm extremely, extremely thankful to Pramodji and to Sujoy, because they will now make people now look at nationalism in a very enlarged, in a very, very, very different way from the one in which it was looked at traditionally. So an important moment. Uh, Mr. Kapoor, like you said, you spent six, seven years researching the book and you are the, the authority on the subject as far as 
Unopened. Uh, no, no, he it is, it is, it is, <laughs> it is the most authoritative account of the RIN which exists till now. It is the, it is not one of the, it is the. Well, thank you very much. But as you just said, that the history is an ongoing, going process. Yes. So uh, it's it, it it is. I still you know keep reading bits and pieces here and there, but there is a very important piece of document that that has just been. Uh, unveiled by or whatever whatever that word is when 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 it's made available and made public mm -hmm. in in the, in the UK, these are letters from uh, uh, Viceroy Abavel to Attlee, and where he had he repeatedly uh, not only Attlee he also wrote to King George at that time, very very explicitly very very openly saying that look I think we should prepare to leave India because. We cannot govern India in, in, the, in this Absolutely. kind of situation where the armed forces are not with us. So that it more and more such documents will come out, and and I, I I hope if there is another edition, I would of course put it. But uh, but it's a it's an ongoing pro, pro process, and as far as uh, reason for for uh, I mean th these are again my guess. Uh, I'm also not a not a scholarly historian. I did do it out of uh, passion, and I do it out of hobby, and I in, I enjoy it. So therefore, I I wrote this book. But but I, I I there are other reasons. I think one that Mahatma Gandhi, who who was the not the uh, official head of Congress, but he was the head of Congress. I mean, whatever he said was the last word. He was a very benign dictator of of politics of the time. He would not compromise with non with non violence. So that was one thing that anything that got uh, any any violent act that got us freedom will not be accepted. So he did not wa want that to happen. Secondly, the the talks with the with the British were going on. They were all at a very good stage. As I said, the British knew exactly what was going on in the minds of these politicians and what their strategies were. They would meet in the evening. They would, uh, these 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 uh, politicians would meet them even socially in the evening and tell them everything. Whereas the Indians did not know. The Indian pol pol politicians did not know what was going on in the minds of. If they had they known, the impact of this um, mutiny was so big that they were packing their bags. Probably. Uh, a lot of things would have happened. I, I even go to the extent by saying that, look, this was the most secular mu mutiny, where the, the president was a Muslim, the vice president was a, 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 was a, a Sikh, uh, and there were, you know, there were, there were scores of such accounts where they say that, look, our force was like this, that we, we were given food in a big uh, wooden vessel with dal in it, and everyone around the, 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 the vessel was given uh, rotis. Next to me was a, was a Sikh. Right next to me was a Muslim. We all dipped our, our roti in, in, the, in that dal. For one second, we were not Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, or anything, or lower caste or upper caste. We were all one. So what I was trying to say that perhaps the partition could have been less bloody. I'm not saying that it could have been avoided. But yes, but perhaps so much bloodshed may not have happened. The other thing I noticed while uh, you know, researching for the film is that you know these twenty thousand naval ratings, they were naval ratings, so it's actually the sepoys. Yeah, they're non-commissioned. They're non commissioned, -commissioned. Non -commissioned sailors. So, yeah. Weren't there even a single officer? I mean, the thinking man, the educated man. Well, there were. There was one who was arrested. Also, he was uh, Ishak uh, Sobani. Uh, he came from a very wealthy uh, textile uh, mill owners in in Bombay, and he was the only officer who, who officer who openly rebelled. And he went barged into the meetings of of uh, British uh, and the and the Indian officers etc. and and openly shouted in Kalaz Zindabad. But other than that, they were they were sitting on the fence. You know, they were they were divided between their duty for the regiment, duty for the uh, the the. The oath that they take when they are when entering into service versus uh, the nationalist fervor, you know, and freedom fight. So it was a very difficult thing. I mean, there were there were people like uh, S. M. Nanda, who, you know, who was in Talwar at that time, 
Mr. Uh, Admiral S. I mean, he became Admiral later. S. N. Kohli who was also. He, he, they both were witness to what was happening. In fact, they were talking to these these uh, these uh, ratings. There were so many. There was another Admiral Karmarkar who who was made to 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 live in a flat above. He a very illustrious officer, in, independent in, in India. He did a tremendous job. Uh, and 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 he uh, he he was I, I don't think he was the uh, naval chief, but he was uh, like uh, head of the defense uh, procurement, etc. And he his job was to actually spy on these boys, you know, and say who's coming into that flat, who's going out of that red flat, and he used to report it. They were doing their duty, so there were very few who took this as a as a as a as a as a freedom movement. They they took it as a uh, you know, no no defense person appreciates mutiny, in, independent India or before, and so they couldn't they couldn't actually come to terms whether it was a whether it was a or decide whether it was a freedom movement or whether it was a mutiny in in the force. It's just ironical yeah. that uh, most of the officers of Free India naval officers who went on to become chief of naval staff and all well they were all very capable people yeah, okay. i mean but is, they yeah. actually sort of worked against the freedom movement while the lowly ratings who participated in the freedom movement got forgotten and they had to pay well price. it's like saying whether the glass is half full or half empty you know they were probably uh, doing their duty you know of duty of being loyal to the to Lord, the oath that, that they, they took did. you know so uh, professor Mishra, why was it only the communists who sort of helped? Was it a was it a genuine uh, thing, or was it a you know political move that here was something which they could use to sort of get back into favor? You see, we must uh, for communists. It was a great psychological movement. A, a great psychological moment. Firstly, they had been discredited completely during the course of the Quit India movement because of their uh, people's war line, according to which they were actually supporting or they were not fighting against the British at a time when Congress was banned. So they had been discredited a great deal. After the end of the war, when USSR won, Allied forces won. So firstly, it was a psychological moment and this was a time for the communists to now assert their anti-imperialism, anti-Britishness. For the Congress, uh, this is the time of the cabinet mission. Cabinet mission has arrived and Indian leadership, nationalist leadership is very excited for different reasons. For Nehru, the fact that there is going to be a constituent assembly, he is very excited about it because this was a demand Nehru had been voicing since 1933. So the fact that the cabinet mission has agreed to an elected constituent assembly to make a constitution for India, that is a very sacred idea uh, for Nehru and he does not want that to be compromised or disrupted in any way. For Gandhi, in any case, we know that uh, in the late 19th century, the uh, our national movement, the, one of the demands of the nationalist leaders was Indianization of services. There should be more and more Indians in the services. Now, after Gandhi comes, that changes completely. Indianization of services demand is given up and Gandhi tells the service people to leave the services that do not serve imperialism, but leave them. But you serve the nationalist cause by leaving the services. When you are in the services, there is a kind of a maybe a lower level morality is that it's unethical not to serve them. So many there were many other examples when Chandra Singh Garwali, he refused to fire. Gandhi did not support it. There were others. Gandhi did not support it. So I would look upon it as one kind of ethical system versus another kind of ethical system. INA soldiers Gandhi did not support because he thought they should have left, but they cannot remain. And then you cannot then fight from one side and from the other side. Many army people also think that there is something unethical about it. So lived life is very, very complex and it will not be possible for me to take a stand. But except to say that it was a battle between one kind of ethics and another kind of ethics. For communists, it was a psychological moment. For Nehru, the constituent assembly was a very big thing. For Gandhi, for him, non-violence was very, very sacred. And the fact that when you are in the services, 
then you don't rebel. Because he, Gandhi at some point said that when we become independent, then we cannot encourage this. Because then we want people to be loyal and ethical and follow the rules of the services. Now these rules cannot completely change. Therefore, people should serve nationalism by leaving, getting out of the imperialist force. But so yet, I guess these are... Me, yet uh, the point that Pramod made is extremely revelatory. He says that Nehru wanted to visit Bombay at that particular That's moment. Right, yeah. Because ne Nehru, if you have studied Nehru, then Nehru was always inclined... Nehru was always inclined... Think, say from the beginning, because they would not have heard him. Huh? Okay, so the point that I was making was that uh, while Professor Mishra has said this, the uh, Pramod's point is equally valid where, and it's actually quite revelatory, that Nehru wanted to visit Bombay at that time and participate with the naval ratings in this strike. So it again tells you that Nehru, within the Congress, as a centrist organization serving nationalism, was probably inclined towards the right and not to the left. The, this would be no, no. Towards See, the no. If you if you look at Nehru's history, Nehru was a Fabian socialist, but he was equally somebody who loved to fight. There is another historical perspective that I can give you. When Naba, when there was a crisis in Naba and Farid Court, Nehru actually visited these princely in states the and went and went and attacked them publicly. So this this is a this is actually a very very revealing uh, thing that uh, Pramod has said that there is a letter which has been written by Sardar Patel asking Gandhi not, not to allow Nehru to visit Bombay because he will inflame the situation. So I think that's it, true. Again, it shows it shows Nehru in a different light. Well, there's there's, there's something else you know which uh, on the 25th of uh, three days after the surrender. Uh, Congress uh, gave a call for a big rally in Chaupati. There were over 3 lakh people uh, and it was presided by uh, Sadar Patel and Nehruji was one of the speakers. And Sadar Patel, as usual, said that we had to do this, otherwise this would have caused destruction to the Navy and after all we had we have to have Navy in the independent India, etc., etc. But he had got the surrender on the promise that none of them will be victimized. But when the Nehruji's chance to speak came, he very categorically said, and it is reported in every newspaper of the time, that we have given promise to the, to the ratings, a promise that we are not capable of keeping. Or from the same stage, he said that. I mean, that here's here's the chairman of the or the uh, you know he Sadar Patel was saying that we it was good that they surrendered from that very stage. I'm not trying trying to say who was right or who was wrong, but but he him he said at that time it was reported in every newspaper on the 26th of February that we have made them surrender with promise that we are not capable of keeping because they were not in power. But the saddest part is that when they came to power. For the next 10 years, each one of these ratings, you know, even when uh, uh, Nehru was the Prime Minister, there was one particular rating from uh, from Bengal who, who wrote a letter to, to, uh, to Nehruji saying that you were on the street fighting for independence. We were on the street fighting for independence. Look at where you are. You are the Prime Minister and we are still languishing. You know, we are on the... So for 10 years, they, they fought. But none of them were reinstated. They were none of them were reinstated. There was just four line letter saying that the government has has in principle decided that anyone who participated or was demobilized because of uh, uh, no demob yes demobilized because of taking part in in, in the mutiny, uh, the government they are not eligible for uh, re reinstatement. And not just that. Even in civil services in the government, they are not uh, capable. This is all on record. So Nehruji himself, I mean, he, probably it was the the, the council of the uh, of the cabinet. But this is this did happen for, for for no none of them were were employed, you know. But each of them, I mean, most of them, Madan Singh became, uh, you know, uh, with with Biju Patnaik, he started Kalinga uh, uh, Airlines. Yeah. Um, M.S. Khan went to Pakistan, of course he changed his name and so on, but he became the, uh, the chief of Navy there. 
and it's it's they're still saying that it's not the same MS Khan, but he is the same MS Khan, you know. So they were, they, they were all very capable people, but they were not given employment. They were not reinstated. It was B. C. Dutt whose voice we heard who wrote that letter to. Them. No, it was Vishwanath Bose who wrote that. Vishwanath Bose, yes, who wrote that letter. Yes. Wrote that letter. Yeah. And um, okay, while we say that you know it was forgotten and stuff like that, but twenty years after the mutiny, there is a political movement that takes place in a part of the country where the RIN mutiny plays a major role again. You want to talk about that? You're talking about Utpal Dhatia? Yes. Well, in 1965, yes, 65, 66 20 years. years, 20 years later, Utpal that staged a play called Kallol, you know, which is the Black wave, black wave. You're a Bengali. You should know. Kalol. Kalol yeah. means uh, 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 commotion. 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 Yes. Commotion. And it was. Uh, this was at the time when Congress was in power at West Bengal. Uh, this has taken people by by complete. You know, they were uh, there were so many people queuing from Minerva Theatre in Bead Street in in, in Central Calcutta. Uh, but the the Congress government of the time in Calcutta, I think it was the Sen, PC Sen, no, who didn't want uh, anyone to see there. They could not ban it because that would make the you know make the the, the, the play more more popular. So there was they put their youth Congress people around. Now in retaliation, the communists because he was a communist, they put uh, all the the young boys around, and you know it just ran for some 800 shows continuously. Eventually, six months later, Utpal Dutt was arrested and, and, and the play had to stop because he was uh, playing the part of uh, Admiral Rattray, you know, the FOB that you mentioned of, of uh, Bombay. Uh, he, was, he was playing that part. So, you know, the, it was disrupted because he was, he was uh, arrested. So there were several such things where even after 20 years, Somehow, Congress didn't want people to know about this, uh, this mutiny. In fact, for this film, I had uh, actually interviewed Upal Dutt's daughter. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't use it because of time constraints and stuff. So she said that uh, you know they had even gotten some of the people who had taken part in the mutiny to come and witness yeah, the show. They were alive at that time. Yes, you know, they were yeah, alive. 20 yeah, years later, yeah, they were alive. Yeah. Can we contribute? Yes, please. Sir. Uh, good evening, everybody, and special thanks to you, sir, and the filmmaker. Uh, my name is Colonel Raj Purohit. Now I'm going to give you a slightly different and a factual uh, context and uh, some data. Uh, I've brought along the record of my father, Reti Four. 1224, who was an active participant in the mutiny that you've just shown. Uh, by trade, he was a signal man. And there. Was a signal school, yes. yes. So he was at that time posted in HMS Talwar. Uh, <clears throat> he was only one of the seven ratees who were fluent in Morse code. So <clears throat> it was principally upon. Once the bigger people decided that it news has to be spread, he was principally among those guys who spread this wildfire on shore and offshore. And that's how all these people who got to know and civilian people, 300 of them who died, they were supporting these guys. So when I got, got commissioned to the army in 91, uh, and of course, often my father would uh, correlate these stories to us wherever I would go and leave. So. <clears throat> In 2001, I think it was, I took my father to the location where erstwhile HMS Talwar was located. Of course, there's nothing there. Mumbai has moved on. Yeah. He could yeah. identify, of course, but he generally told me, this is the place, this is what happened. Now, on and off, we would ask him, ye kya hua, aise kaise, wo kaise. So he said, these Angrez officers would stuff rotten bread into our food, uh, sorry, our mouths, because we would refuse to eat. Then they would beat us because uh, because we simply, we didn't, uh, we didn't want to fight back, but we said we are on hunger strike. So when I asked him finally, when you were at such a superior position and thousands of you were there, why did you surrender? He said it was because of Aruna Asifal. 
Really? Sir, he, I asked him uh, what happened. To, I mean, he said, look, we didn't know, I mean, anything north or south of what we were doing. We were only 19, 20. And, but what was, we, what we wanted to do was to see India independent get rid of Britishers. That thing was common and we understood that well. But I asked him that in case you were doing such a noble cause, why did you surrender? He said, our leaders told us, we will be, which you, sir, you mentioned repeatedly, that we will get our due and that we will not get punished. You, you, you said victimized, the word was punished. So I said, what happened to you? I said, all of us, particularly all those three, four hundred of us, were quietly under the name of transfer, charged with treason, and my father, including others, were put in jail in a place called Venduruti. This is a place in Tamil Nadu called Venduruti. This is a small island there. I'm, I'm, I'll give you the correct locations as well. And he used to tell us of so many vivid stories of what he's lived through those those five, four or five actual days and the and the trauma that fell upon them thereafter. And like you just mentioned now, while he was one of the top ratings in whatever was the conditions then, he was forcefully retired from service as soon it became feasible that it will not be noticeable along with so many others. My father, uh, I mean the interview of uh, of Shridhar that you played, sir, uh, he was one of the uh, colleagues with those guys because they were right there. So I thought since I'm only the probably the only person who's a son who's uh, uh, a father of that uh, guy, uh, and and while the while the forces like you rightly brought out do not identify themselves with mutants and stuff like that. So even officially, Indian Navy has not released its history of the Navy. Uh, well, now they're doing it. They're doing it. And if you ask them also, and since I'm also a uniform guy. I often go and prod them, they would still hold on to that. It was not a mutiny, it was an uprising of the ratings. Yes. So much so for whatever else we are talking about. What was the Aruna Asaf But I can connect it. Aruna Asaf Ali I, was, sorry. I, see, Aruna Asaf Ali was the one who actually instigated them or or encouraged them is the right word to to, to mutiny. Correct. She, she actually met them at least four months. Now, let me tell you the whole story. Then in 1942, the Quit India movement on the 9th of, when, 8, 9th of August, when all of the, all the big leaders, uh, top leaders were arrested, she went underground. Absolutely. Sir. And she went underground with few other young Turks or what you can call them. And she never came out. Her, her property was confiscated. There was a 50,000 price on her head. When all the leaders were released, in 45, uh, Gandhiji made a personal appeal to to uh, to Aruna Asaf Ali, saying that look, you are so precious to the country. I know that you are reduced to a skeleton, that everything has been taken. Now come out and 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 serve the nation. She did not come out. She actually met these ratings. Yes. Uh, four months before the, the the mutiny, she met them. She she used to meet in that uh, uh, that uh, that flag that I'm uh, that I've written about in in uh, Rivera, in, um, in Marine Drive, they, that's where she used to address them. So it's not true that it is because of, because of her. Let me just complete. Sure. Let me just complete. But at, everyone was under Mahatma Gandhi. And the, it's, it's in the newspaper everywhere. You, the, I've, I've, I've probably devoted 10 pages to, uh, to her open spat, open spat with Mahatma Gandhi. When Gandhi Gandhiji said, "No, you cannot do this. This is wrong," and that you cannot unite uh, the the violence with non-violence on the on the barricades, all these things they were coming out in newspaper every day. And she used to say that, "Look, uh, what kind of a freedom fight, uh, you know fight is this?" So she fought with Gandhi also, and till the end, she she actually was supposed to go and address them on the first day at three three o'clock. She couldn't go that day. She couldn't go that day because the Congress party prevented her from, from going, not physically, but but meant that, that she was not allowed to, to address them. In the end, it's quite possible, like your father, your father said, that the news to the rating, because she was the only one who had access to the rating, news of surrender could have been, uh, could have been conveyed through her. But it was not at all. Till the end, she was with, with the rating. No, she did I'm not, not make them I, so, no, surrender. Sir, no, sir, I'm not saying what you are saying, or if I meant differently. 
what i am saying is that of course my father and those ratings didn't know gandhi had no idea what was sadar patel so whatever was happening at the higher level so he was disappointed he was, uh, he was no, disappointed. no no not at all no, no sir they 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 met they met uh, gandhi ji they never met anybody yes sir but uh, they met sadar patel they met nehru ji you know and of course uh, and, and jinna of course but uh, but uh, mrs uh, aruna asaf ali they were meeting uh, more frequently because she was the one who 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 encouraged them to to go my, go my father meeting. father did not talk about uh, uh, pandit uh, pandit ji or patel he said that he has had the opportunity to meet and meet often uh, miss aruna ali yes and she was the one who used to feed them uh, the news part yes and whatever we got to know, i said why did you guys finally give in he said we got to know that she is not there we don't have anybody we were fighting through her or possibly for whatever she was telling us quite possible. so quite but possible finally we gave in because we had no support left now that's true that they were asking for political support and there was no support coming Bar through <coughs> barring the communists who were supporting yes and uh, you know each uh, you know politicians don't do this for others uh, they do it for themselves you know whether it is communist or congress or and she was in she oh, was investigated yeah. also and yeah, thank you yes, by the politician thank you but the very important piece of yes. if you have if you have more on on him on my father's you. record i have my father's meeting with mr dat hai i have very nice uh, if i if i could i uh, are are pleadings to uh, the uh, ministry of defense to uh, accept our father as one of the freedom fighters also fell on the deaf ears yeah. because yeah, of the of, of whatever bureaucracy you talk about So I'll, I'll take your yeah. take your contact. That's coming out. Absolutely, that's, that's wonderful. That's the same thing. Constantly read it. So that's that would be very useful. I would. Sure, sir. Very wonderfully. We will do wonderful. Sure. Thank you. 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 Thank you.